Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for attending today's IBM Middleware User Community Ask the Experts session. My name is Kelsey Lammers, and I'll be hosting today's webcast. Our topic for today is Deploy NetCool Network Management Suite in four hours. Offline lines are currently in listen-only mode. There will be a question and answer session towards the end of the presentation. However, you may ask a question at any time during the presentation using the questions window located in the control panel. Uh, tomorrow we will have the recording and slides of today's presentation available on the IBM Middleware User Community website for you to access. Um, you'll receive a follow-up link with uh, email to those archives. All right, so now I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. We have joining us Krishna Kadeli. He's a senior software engineer with IBM. And we also have Dave Thompson. He's a solutions architect with IBM. Thank you, Krishna and Dave, for joining us today. The floor is now yours. Thank you, Kelsey. Can, I, can you see my screen now? Is that good? Uh, it looks like... You're on the, uh, you might need to flip-flop your screens. It looks like it's on the notes page. So the notes page, is that better? No, it didn't switch. It's still on. It looks like we can see the, the screen with the black border around it. OK. about now? That looks great. OK. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining today for this uh, session. Uh, my name is Krishna. I work for uh, IBM and the support. Um, today's session is about the how to deploy NetCool network management solution in a short span, as short as four hours. Um, Again, this is only for guidance on how to deploy the product, and this is not a replacement for any best practices out there or the existing documentation or the red books. Um, <coughs> so the agenda will cover about what is that cool network management solution, uh, how many products it's com combined with, and what is the installation procedure, and what configuration goes with it, and then uh, doing the integration between all these components and products and uh, do a sanity check on the integration and finally do the single sign-on implementation with, uh, between the dashboards uh, the GUI servers you may have and then we can open up for a question and answer at the, after that. But to start with, the NetCool network management is not NOI. So the NOI is completely a different suite of products. Uh, than N, not completely different, but it's more than what NNM contains with. The NNM is a subset of the NOI. So if you are, if you are, if you have NOI, and you you'll be having a lot of other products such as Scala, which is a smart cloud analytics log analysis, and a few other bits, which are not part of this NNM. Uh, you must have heard about network health dashboard uh, that came out of the NOI. Uh, they are part of the NOI license, not as the NNM bundle. So to go into this a solution, NNM is comprised of mainly three products, um, but it, you have many subcomponents there. So the NetCool Omnibus, um, again, that has the Omnibus web GUI, and you do have the couple of probes, uh, SNMP probe and syslog. And you will have the JDBC gateway that writes the historical events uh, to the DB2 database. Um, from your object server. And then, uh, obviously, IBM Tool and Network Manager, ITNM, um, that's comprised of the uh, core and GUI components, and also the reports package. And it also uh, you will also have the DB2. You are entitled for the DB2 um, the package as an ITNM customer. And then ITNCM, NetCool Configuration Manager. Um, this version is NNM bundle version is 9.3. It comprises of the, all the latest and greatest uh, um, GA builds that are out there um, as of today. So the Omnibus 8.1, ITNM 4.2, and NCM 6.4.2. Um, so if you want to take a look at which, what are the actual part numbers that you need to download, uh, I'll put a two links out there. Uh, one talks about the NNM. Uh, where you can find each and every part number in that link. I uh, just added a reference for the NOI in case uh, if you are a NOI customer. 
and I've done the breakdown of the actual installation. How long does it take? Um, the key part here is uh, the prerequisite scanner. Um, we can't actually say how long it will take. Some customers have their own uh, admin rights. They can install the RPMs and whatnot. Some customers don't have it. They have to raise tickets with other teams and whatnot. So that estimate we can't do. Hoping that you have met the the prerequisite scanner uh, requirements, the the rest of the installation should not take more than four hours, uh, as long as um, you follow the instructions in the right order. So I have done this setup in the lab on three servers. Uh, again, this is completely a standalone. This is not a, uh, a highly available deployment. Um, so. It, and uh, you could deploy this on four servers, or one server, or two, uh, whatever that may be, uh, based on the hardware resources you have available on those servers. Um, on the server one in this lab, for this reference, I have deployed the ITNM core and Omnibus core along with the probes. And the server two goes with the Dash, which is the GUI server, and also the um, a DB2 database that contains all the database instances. And server three is dedicated for IT and CM, where we run both the worker and presentation servers. For this deployment, this was completely done as a non-root user, uh, Netcool being the user account, and the database user as NSIM. We will have a total four databases, NSIM and IT and CM, uh, and the reporter is the database that is used by JDBC Gateway to forward the events from the Omnibus and store them for the historical purpose. And then TCRDB is used by uh, Tivoli Common Reporting. Um, and this is the reason why you end up with the four instances all together. So the installation order total, this is comprised of 20 steps. Um, we first start with the DB2 installation. Um, and then that is on the server 2 where it goes with the dash. And then you will go back onto the server one. You lay down the Omnibus core and the ITNM core and also the probes and the nickel package so that you have the code deployment ready uh, before you start deploying the GUI pieces. I've listed out the order, um, what you should be going with. Um, you may be finding a, a, a later version of these uh, some of these uh, packages, for example, prerequisite scanner, you do have 1207 available um, out there on the fixed central. I think uh, installation manager that 1841 is the latest, uh, but that shouldn't matter, but anything, these versions or later should work okay uh, for this combination, uh, NNM 9.3. So once you deploy the core, you move on to the server 2 where you deploy the DB2 and you start deploying all the uh, the GUI components. Uh, same, it, it starts with the prerequisite scanner that is a very uh, key and must. As long as you meet the requirements, your installation will go smooth. If you don't have that um, uh, completely sorted, you will run into all sort of installation issues. So the, the key is you take enough time and make sure your servers are meeting the requirements of the, the specific products. So <clears throat> uh, you may be wondering, uh, now we replaced, if you, are, if you are an existing customer, you have a tip. Um, we are now replaced with the dash. Uh, it contains, uh, it's a combination of a few other bits. And the installation manager replaced, uh, previously we are using a composite offering installer slash deployment engine that replaced that. Um, the step number nine, if you look into it, uh, we replaced the tip with these two combinations, was and the dash. Um, the was is underlying framework and the uh, jazz SM and dash sits on top of it. And along with that, you lay down, once you lay down the dash, you lay down the TCR, Tivoli Common Reporting Framework. After that, you lay down the web GUI. Um, once that is done, you can lay down the ITNM GUI and reports. They go on it. Um, when you download these packages, you may observe some of these uh, core products. Um, product size is pretty, and uh, the package uh, size is very low. For example, ITNM is only probably 800 meg compared to previous package. 3 gig and whatnot. Uh, we actually ripped apart 
Um, the ITNM bundle only contains the core, the GUI, and reports, period. Um, and also it has installation manager, but we don't have the dash, was, TCR, and all those pieces. Because they are split off, uh, that is why the size is pretty low. Once you are done with this, um, and you can move on to the server 3 and do the deployment of the IT and CM, uh, the order is pretty much same. You will have two installations of a dash. That's because IT and CM requires its own profile. It can't coincide inside the uh, ITN, ITNM profile. And then once that, that PC is done, uh, you can do the um, ITNCM integration with ITNM, uh, going back to the server 2, and then finally you run the single sign-on steps. Um, so starting with the DB2, so the DB2 is not laid down as part of the installation manager. Uh, it still goes with the native method. Either you run the DB2 install or DB2 setup. Um, I was using for this one a 10.5 enterprise edition. Um, and in this case, I'm using the existing user account called NSIM. I'm not going with the default DB2 inst1. Uh, remember that uh, the user, uh, uh, the actual length of the user is limited to eight characters. It cannot be more than that. Um, so some of the documentation you will see NSIM, DB user, and whatnot. If, if, you, have, if you try to clone that, um, that will be more than eight characters. You will have issues there. So just uh, see to it that you have a username that is eight or less characters. Obviously, we disable the SE Linux, that's the default, and uh, follow the uh, prerequisites that is defined by the DB2 itself, install necessary RPMs. Uh, and then uh, if, you, if you are OK with that, you can go with the latest pa uh, fix packs. You can top it up. Uh, I have given a link uh, that actually talks about each and every fix pack against uh, all DB2 versions, 9.7, 10.1, 10.5, and so forth. Yeah, once the DB2 server is laid down, the next step you want to do is you want to actually create all those four database instances we talked about, right? The reporter, NCM, TCR, DB, and SIM. Uh, one uh, the, uh, note here is the reporter database cannot be um, created automatically out of the box. You have to first lay down the JDBC gateway um, on server two. Uh, server one we were talking about. So once that is laid down, that will actually create some of the SQL files, that files you need to have in order to create this report database. So this may be a bit later effect, but I put them together so you have all of them in one place. Um, and then IT and CM, um, there is no specific script. Um, you just uh, create a database and then um, following that uh, documentation, but you do have the user-defined functions uh, to prevent uh, some of the reporting errors. Um, uh, that is a mandatory step. Uh, they're also listed in the documentation. This is covered in, in detail in the later slides. Uh, um, so I won't go through them details here. The other two databases are TCRDB. Um, uh, the, the TCRDB, uh, it is just a package you download and untar it. Um, and then you navigate into one of the uh, the folder called content store database. Um, you copy those uh, couple of uh, files from that folder into your uh, database host. And um, you generate a SQL file, and you run that file to create the database. One thing to note here is, if you are an Android user, in my case, uh, I was deploying as Netcool, you have to create the a database also as a net cool, not as an NSIM user. Um, but if you are a root account that is deploying all these products, you can have database user as XYZ, whatever that may be. But if you are a non-root, uh, they both need to match the database that is creating. So there is a tech note out there that's not in the documentation, but you can follow that why it is. So as long as you make note of all these caveats, you, your installation will go fine, absolutely. The last PC is the NSIM database. Um, so you untar the ITNM package. Uh, you copy whatever the database you're using. In this case, I was using DB2. If you are Oracle, then you copy those uh, Oracle scripts. You just uh, create the database. You don't populate the schemas and the, uh, tables and whatnot. 
um, that can be that is done by the installer itself so you don't need to go through all that uh, pain and once that uh, database is done we are pretty much done with the database part so we move on to the server one where we can lay down the um, omnibus core and ITNM core obviously you follow the prerequisite and uh, and run the installation manager um, I've given some links um, where you can download the both of these products both can be downloaded from the fix central um, that links will uh, lead you there so in this case you don't need to run the prerequisite scanner for the other products such as uh, dash and JSM because they are not going to be laid down on the server so the relevant products omnibus core itm core you want to check those um, uh, prereq uh, before deploying the products. So the Omnibus core, um, it's a, a pretty straightforward installation. Um, in this case, once you lay down the core, um, either you can run the um, the configuration wizard at the at, on the very last screen of this installation or you can run the wizard from the command line mode using NCO ICW and then you can create the object server and gateways and the process agent um, whatever it is you want to do uh, on that server in this case I have laid down both object server um, and the bidirectional gateway process agent on the single server but ideally on a production server you want to have them split up you will have primary here, backup somewhere else, and the bygate running either on the backup server. And typically, you want to change the passwords if you are using authentication for um, object server based. Um, you can do on the command line or on the GUI side using the native uh, the console that is provided by uh, Omnibus. One thing here is the process agent, if you are trying to run as a, um, a non-root, you have some um, the caveats you need to follow based on the operating system you are. So I have listed them here, mainly for the Red Hat. Um, and then you lay down the JDBC gateway um, and also the reporting scripts. Those are the ones like we talked it most the events from your object server to the reporter database. And then you lay down the SNMP probe and then nickel package. Um, so because when you ran that uh, the configuration wizard in the previous slide, that only contains the primary object server, backup object server, or the gateways, but not the empty trap D and JDBC. So you need to add them to your PA. I've listed one example here, JDBC gateway. And then um, when you finally run um, add both of them the list will contain five components here uh, one thing to note here the SNMP probe will require a pseudo access um, so the tech note there has a very clear instructions depending on what operating system you have what steps you need to execute so that you don't run into issues in starting um, the uh, SNMP probe so once you are done with the omnibus core and probes and the PA and we move on to the ITNM core here um, again here we will only select uh, two components net network manager core components and also the database creation script uh, as part of your selection list and uh, when you move on to the uh, uh, different panels within your um, installation process you, you select the database and you also need to check create the tables uh, because we only created the database um, in the initial process but not the tables so by, by selecting this it not only creates the tables it also populates the necessary data within the initial data within the NSIM and other schemas so once the installation process is done the best way to check is run a couple of commands to make sure uh, the NSIM database is correctly uh, populated uh, for example all the MIPS and also the enumerations are actually there so 
In the previous versions, if you are familiar with the ITNM, uh, you have to run NCP MIB uh, manually. Um, in, in this case, in 4.2, you don't need to do all that. That is taken care of by the uh, installation process. Um, again, during the installation process, it will ask you for the object server. If you have an object server in the failover mode, just feed the primary name uh, because you won't feed the you won't have option to feed the backup object server name. And um, at the end of the installation, on the ITM core end, uh, there are two files you need to change to reflect your virtual object server. Um, that is config ITNM CFG and also the model NCMDB which has a web top data source reference. Uh, one thing to note here is if we have a multi-layer or multi-tier architecture of the object server, say you have a collection or aggregation display, if your GUI server is talking to display servers and if your probes and ITNM gateways and other things are talking to the collection or aggregation, the model NCMDB, the actual laptop data source name, should reflect what you are uh, using for your Dash or GUI. That makes sense. Um, so, <clears throat> obviously, in um, 4.2, something new requirement that is, you need to have a Python for Apache Storm. Um, if you are a non-root user, uh, it won't ask you for any other uh, details other than a Python path for validation, but if you have a root account, you need to have a non-root account that will stop, that will be used to stop and stop the Apache Storm process. Um, <coughs> once that piece is done, uh, did I move fast now? We move on to the server two. So we are done with the server one, uh, where we lay down uh, pretty much same installation manager. Uh, at this time, instead of tip, we lay down the was and dash. Uh, remember that it depends which package you download. You can download was and the dash as two separate packages, or there is a combined package as well. Irrespective of which one you download, uh, it doesn't matter, but you need to make a selection of these six pieces. Uh, if you select those six pieces, then you are done with the underlying framework of your Dash. Um, the WebSphere uh, application server and the JDK and uh, Jazz for SM and reporting services that is key for your TCR and finally the Dash. So along the process, because you selected the reporting services, um, that's going to prompt you for uh, a TCR package. Um, you need to untar your TCR package and uh, app, um, within your installation process. And again, like I said earlier, your um, user account to connect to the TCR database should be same as your non-root user, not the actual database access user. So once the TCR is done, uh, you just need to recycle your um, uh, dash portal. Actually, that is done as part of the installation process. You don't need to recycle it. Um, and then you can kick off your uh, web GUI installation process. Um, the key thing here is web GUI has three generally available builds. One came up in uh, somewhere in 2014 in uh, April. Then the second package came out in August 2014. That was 8.1. And then later on last year, they released a, a combined package up to the fixed pack 4 level. You need to go with uh, the package that is a fixed pack 4 level. You don't want to go with the other two packages. Uh, if you if you have them, so that's you will run into some issues where you're deploying IT and M GUI. So the best option is that you go with your the latest GA build, which is fixed back for refresh. So once you are done with the installation, you want to actually uh, click on that configure to set up your authentication for your dash. Um, 
or if you forget to do that, you can go on the command line, run the ncw config UI. Um, that will set up your authentication. Once the authentication is set, there is a one more piece that you need to do for the web GUI that is set up your data sources. So you log in as NCO admin, uh, navigate to the data sources, and um, define your actual data source name. Remember here, this one is actually the aggregation, um, the virtual object server name, if you have a virtual object server uh, set up in your environment. It can be display, it can be aggregation, it can be any. Um, but this one will match with your model and some DB that I talked about for ITNM core. Um, once this is done, you're pretty much done with the web GUI installation. One thing to note here is at this point, you want to log back as a SM admin. Make sure SM admin has NCW admin role. But that is assigned as part of the web GUI installation but you want to validate that that is there. And then you can proceed to the uh, next phase of installation. Um, then you <coughs> lay down the ITNM GUI, core comp um, the GUI components. Uh, this is again two pieces. So the, the GUI components and the reports, they are two separate uh, pieces, uh, but they're all going on the same dash. You can have exclusive TCR server, but uh, since we are laying down everything on one place, so I, this was selected. Um, both options were selected. Um, again, here uh, you will feed the data source name, um, which is same as your um, web GUI data source. Um, and you don't need to overwrite. There is an option, the checkbox in the bottom of this uh, very bottom uh, right hand uh, screenshot. You don't need to overwrite web GUI unless you haven't configured them after web GUI installation. Uh, by the way, the, if there are a couple of steps you need to do uh, after doing this uh, ITNM GUI installation. That is, you need to give uh, uh, authorization access to ITNM admin account so that you have access to reports. Uh, the steps are detailed there. You can follow the link and uh, uh, do the uh, uh, appropriate steps. The last piece is for the Dash server is once the installation is done, um, you can log back as the ITNM admin and uh, go to the discovery panel and uh, set up your discovery configuration. You can define the scope and uh, enable the necessary agents and whatnot and kick off full discovery. And uh, make sure the discovery is complete um, and you can run a command against your database because that's where we have to rely for the NSIM integration. So once that is done, you are good to go with the uh, NSIM installation. Uh, at this point, I would like to pass on for the rest of the slides to cover by my colleague, Dave Thompson. Dave, here you go. I'm here. Is uh, Can everyone hear me? And is my voice level OK? Sounds good to me. OK. So I've probably got more slides than I can cover in a half hour, and I want to leave some time for questions. So I'm going to stick to the highlights, um, but the slides will be there for reference with a lot of details on. So uh, to install Configuration Manager, and I'm going to call it Configuration Manager instead of ITNCM, if I can remember to do that through this presentation, to avoid these two very close acronyms. Uh, you're going to need to download installer packages for some applications and stage them on a location. Uh, that's available from Installation Manager on the ITNCM server. You'll probably have some of these already uh, downloaded, and you can reuse those packages. What is your application server? JS Service Management and Dash, um, ITNCM Base version 642, and some of the ITNCM device drivers. There's nine packages. We're just going to talk about the standard driver, one of the smart model packages for Cisco, and all the discovery in this presentation. You can install uh, more driver packages later as you're needed and as you're licensed for them if it's an actual customer use rather than the demo. Um, you also need the prerequisite scanner, which you already have downloaded, and a copy of IBM Installation Manager, which you should already have downloaded. So the flow involves preparing the server and running the prerequisite checker, verifying that your DB2 user-defined functions are set up to handle regular expressions that will be needed in the schema and in certain queries for ITNCM. 
installing installation manager, then installing ITNCM configuration manager, um, using installation manager, including WebSphere and JS. You'll need to install some subset of the ITNCM uh, network device drivers as an install anywhere install, and then you'll need to configure a couple basic resources uh, in order to make uh, configuration manager functional. So next slide, please. Are you, are you going to be able to advance the slides, Krishna? Thank you. So preparing, this is very similar to what we did, um, Krishna's already covered. Use fully qualified host names, please, so that SSO, single sign-on, will function correct later. Um, verify that the ITMCM server itself, server number three, and the other two servers are in the ETC host file and can be pinged. Um, check that the user who will be used to install and run ITNCM has been created. In this case, we're going to use the netcool user in the NCO admin group. You'll also need to set up a user account that's used for some aspects of data handling for a configuration manager. And we're going to call that the uh, FTP user. It needs to be in the same group as the netcool user. You'll need to create the base directory for the installation and chain that to netcool and the group MCO admin. Uh, in this case, we're going to use slash op slash IBM. You need to disable SE Linux. Run the prerequisite checker and correct any problems that are found. And then if the ITNCM database on the DB server hasn't been created, create that. But that's already been created in our case. So next slide, please. So we talked earlier about these DB2 user-defined functions. Uh, we're not going to go into any detail here. The, the instructions are on the slide. Um, you can do that on the database at server itself. Be sure you do it as the user you will be using to connect the database with from ITNCM. And that's going to be the NCM user in this case. In the interest of time, we'll move on to the next slide. Nothing really to cover here that hasn't been covered. Install installation manager on the ITNCM server. It's recommended in the, to install it in group mode. So next slide, please. The key points after you've installed that are to install the repositories for uh, WebSphere, JSSM for Dash, and ITNCM. And you've already seen how to do that in previous slides. Uh, next slide, please. I'm just getting caught up on my slides here. Um, so now we're going to move on to the ITNCM installation itself. This is the ITNCM GUI server and worker servers. And you have to install, as a base component for that, WebSphere and JS and Dash. Um, we won't cover that installation again. It is exactly the same as it was done for the previous servers. Uh, we'll just highlight a couple things. So next slide, please. The key thing to look at for here is that we'll try, the default is usually to try to install the product in the installing user's home directory. Uh, check that installation directory and change that to your location where you want the products installed. The default uh, path is shown here on the slide. So next slide, please. For ITNCM base installation, um, you'll just go into Installation Manager after you've installed WebSphere, Dash, and the JDK. Uh, and you'll select uh, IT or Netcool Configuration Manager version 6.4.2. Um, and in the next slide, again, check that it goes in the installation directory that you want, not the user's home directory. So continuing on, you simply set up the database server. Nothing magic here. Make sure you use the fully qualified host name. Details must be accurate. And use the NSIM user account in our example. That's the user we set up uh, with the, that installed the DB2 UDF files, the user defined functions. You get a warning screen about loading the database. This is where the tables get installed. So just click OK to proceed. So next slide, please.
this is where the bulk of the information is supplied. Um, let me get down to that screen. So the root realm is going to show up in your realm tree in the ITNCM GUI. The default is ITNCM. That generally works okay. You can put in the user, the customer's name. It's painful to change that later, so uh, decide what you want to do in advance. FTP server is just going to be the ITNCM server for an install like this. Um, the FTP user is that FTP user account you set up, and the FTP directory is going to be that user's home directory. Uh, there's several sets of ports. You can accept the defaults. Accept the defaults of yes for the main IDT server question, and make sure that the boxes for activating configuration core and compliance core are checked, and that's the default again. In the section for the network manager integration, make sure that the box is checked indicating that this is a uh, integrated installation. Use the fully quiet qualified host name of the dash server um, where the ITNM GUI is installed, uh, not the core server here, and use the HTTPS port. The default is 16311 in our case. The NM user is a network manager user account. We suggest ITNM. ITNM admin in this case, that's going to be used by ITNCM to make REST calls to do synchronization of device information from ITNM into ITNCM. And the string for the default domain to import ITNM devices into controls where these devices will show up in ITNCM uh, once they're synced in. The default is to create a realm or a folder under the root realm of ITNCM. Uh, for each uh, domain in ITNM. You can change this to a single domain by removing the at symbol, uh, and also just check if you've changed the default uh, base realm uh, that it's also changed in this string. Next slide. Just accept the default values for the remaining um, panels of the install manager, and that will complete the ITNCM base product installation. Remember that after this is installed, you will use the user IntelliDen to stop the server when you're prompted. Um, and it'll stay that way until after you set up SSO. Do not start the ITMCM server yet. Uh, you need to stop it before you start drivers so that, or install drivers. So there's no point in installing it yet or starting it yet. Next slide, please. So next we install ITMCM drivers. Uh, so what we talked about, the current version is version 20. Um, there's a lot of packages. We're just going to talk about installing a standard driver package, a smart driver package, and auto discovery drivers. At a minimum, you have to install standard drivers. It's recommended to install the latest version of auto discovery drivers, or there is one in the base installer. The drivers are packaged with install anywhere, so you won't be using IBM installation managers. Be sure to install these drivers as the same user, Netcool in this case, who installed ITNCM base. And be sure again that ITNCM is stopped prior to installing. So next slide. So the installers for standard smart model drivers are very similar, slightly different command. Um, you just go to the directory where you untar the installers, run the command shown here on the slide, uh, that LAXVM parameter points to the JRE uh, Java command uh, laid down in the, uh, the um, ITNCM base install, if you have any question there. Um, just notice there's a slight difference in the commands. And when you run, just verify that the fault prompts are correct. Nothing, nothing else magic there. Next slide. Next step, you install the auto discovery driver using the same basic approach. Just note the command. And choose the option to update auto discovery uh, when you do the installation. So after you've installed that, you need to start ITNCM. Uh, the instructions shown there on the slide. Um, change to the directory uh, that cool NCM drivers bin. And you'll see several scripts in there depending on which driver packages you, you installed. What these do is enable the smart model drivers essentially licensing them um, from the product perspective, not from a legal perspective. Um, notice the dash all parameter. That will enable all the smart model drivers in that package. It's possible to do them one at a time, and you'd only want to do them one at a time. If you 
have certain licensing constraints. Next slide. So a little bit of minimal post installation configuration. There's a lot of things you can configure to customize it. They're all covered well in the docs. But what you need to do is to set up a work distribution server resource and an authentication resource. The work server resource basically uh, represents a JRE in the back end that's going to run work and communications with devices. The authentication resource uh, is where you're going to put in the credentials that you communicate with the devices in. So the key, key thing is to edit the default work distribution server in the root realm of ITMCM. Um, add a work server set or add an existing one. Uh, make sure that you use the, let's see here, the, the work server ID of worker one unless you change that um, during your install. Make sure the ignore and exclude fields are false, delay seconds are set to zero, position is set to one. You can look under Systems Manager's Servers tab to see what your ID is if you change it from worker one and forgot what it was. Edit the default authentication resource in the root realm. And it'll be pretty clear when you edit that how to set up the username, passwords, and enable passwords. Just make sure the ignore field is set to false. And set the position to one for a new, any new entries you add. You can add multiple entries if you have multiple sets of credentials. So you're pretty much ready to work with uh, network devices at this point. So next slide. So next, we're going to move on to the integration from ITNCM to ITNM. Again, this is not a replacement for the complete documentation. The summary here is that most of the integration work uh, involving the GUI components uh, and the ITN CMDB access on the Dash server for Network Manager, ITNM, have already been done in previous steps when we were setting up ITNM and Omnibus in this presentation. So the remaining steps you have to do, excluding the SSO work, include setting up user accounts on the Dash server for the ITNM, the Network Manager GUI, Configuring the SNMP track recipient value on the configuration manager ITNCM server to point to the Omnibus SNMP trap probe. Copying a few basic uh, JAR files for device synchronization from the ITNM GUI server to the ITNM server and potentially adjusting the schedule of device synchronization uh, to make things a little quicker when you're doing setup and testing. Next slide. So to set up the user accounts, you have to have a common account with the correct privileges. You can either set up the ITNM admin account in the configuration manager server uh, using the HTTP-based HTTP account administration client, or you could edit the default ITNCM accounts of administrator, observer, and operator to the network manager dash instance. Um, if you add users to ITNCM, they have to be in at least one ITNCM group. Uh, if you add users to uh, fool for any of the accounts, even if you use the ITNM admin account in Dash, assign the role shown on the slide. So next slide. Okay, we're going to skip this slide. Just additional information for reference uh, in the interest of time. So next slide. So you just have to copy three files from the network manager, Dash server, to the ITNCM server. Uh, copy them to the exact same locations from one server to the other. Um, no other steps to do here. Next slide. You need to set up the SNMP trap recipient to point ITNCM configuration manager to the SNMP trap probe. So from the ITNCM client GUI, uh, Open the System Properties panels from Tools System Properties menu on the Systems Manager tab in the GUI. Um, find the SNMP Trap Recipients property and set that for the host name and port of the Omnibus SNMP probe. In this case, it's running on Server 1. The formats, host name, colon, port, the default port is 162. It's a common delimited list if you have multiple probes, but we don't have to worry about that in this case. Next slide. For initial integration testing, you can adjust the schedule values for the delay of device synchronization after ITNCM starts, as well as for the 
periodic scheduled synchronization. The default values are 15 minutes and 24 hours, respectively. You can adjust these values in the R series properties file on the ITNCM server, as shown on the slide. These files are read dynamically, but the reading takes place when a sync is executed. So for testing purposes, if you change these to short intervals, restart the ITNCM server to make them take a place, or to make them take effect immediately. So at this point, unless you made errors and typos and so on, synchronization should be functional. Next slide, please. So this is just some other settings you could make um, regarding synchronization. We'll skip that in the interest of time. And next slide. So now we've moved on to ITNCM to ITNM integration to SSO part. Uh, the steps you need to do are to set up user groups and roles for configuration manager users in the network manager dash instance. You need to create the default ITNCM users, the configuration manager users, in the network manager dash instance. You need to export the network manager dash LTPA key store and then import that into the configuration manager dash instance. You need to set up both dash instances to properly support SSO. And then you need to create and configure a federated repository on the configuration manager dash instance. So next slide, please. So users and groups, uh, user groups and roles log on to the dash GUI on the network uh, network manager server as SM admin to launch the web sphere administrative console create two groups, Intelligent User and Intelligent Admin User. They need to be spelled exactly as shown. Go back to the dash GUI and assign the Intelligent User role to the Intelligent User group. Assign the Intelligent Admin User role to the Intelligent Admin User group. And we're done with that. Next slide. You need to create a few users, uh, ITNCM or Configuration Manager users, in the Network Manager dash uh, do, or ne the network manager dash instance. So from the WebSphere console on that server, the network manager dash server, create a user named Intelligent uh, and add that user to the Intelligent user and Intelligent admin user groups. This is the user that starts the, the ITNCM, the configuration management application, and it needs to be in, this re in that uh, what's going to be the federated repository in order to be authenticated correctly. While you're in there, add the ITNM admin user to the Intelligent user and Intelligent admin user groups. If you haven't already created the configuration manager, administrator, operator, and observer users in the dash instance for, net, for network manager, create them now, add them all to the Intelligent user group, and add the user administrator to the Intelligent admin user group. So next slide. These slides, we're simply going to export LTPA key stores from the network manager dash, uh, and then we're going to import that key store into the configuration manager dash. So next slide. And we'll just skip this slide. Just This is standard practice. Um, just follow what's on the slides. So we have to figure the, configure the SSO settings on most dash instances. This is almost the same on both. You just go in to the, um, the WebSphere administration console on each one. On the network manager WebSphere console, make sure SSO is enabled, make sure it requires SSL is unchecked, and all the other selections are unchecked. You have to set your domain name on that server to the domain used by all servers in your installation. And these all servers must use that same domain name for SSO to work. If you made any changes, restart WebSphere for the changes to take effect. Next slide. This is exactly the same except leave the domain name field blank on the configuration manager WebSphere administration console. And remember, at this point, you're using the intelligent user to log on to the configuration manager. WebSphere instance. Next slide. 
So let's suggest a cautionary step. It's not that there's anything that's been done wrong or there's anything that's broken, but if you make a typo when you're setting up the list of the federated repository, you could lock yourself out of WebSphere. Make your life easy, either back up the WebSphere configuration or snapshot your VM, whichever is most convenient in your environment. Next slide. <clears throat> now we'll set up the federated repository for ITMCM. The next few slides cover this topic. This is work is done only on the ITMCM server, server number three. You use the intelligent user account to log onto the WebSphere console. On the global security screen, select federated repositories under user account repository, click configure, select new repository and custom repository. Next slide. On the general properties screen, set up the repository identifier and repository adapter class names as shown on this slide. You add four new custom properties, username, password, port one, and host one. To set the values of these, just open the corresponding screen on the network manager dash server, server number two, and copy the values exactly. Next slide. So, the next step is to set the unique distinguished name of the repository reference, the O equals netcool object server repository, and then remove the internal file repository from the federated repository. Next slide, just one second, I've got to clear my throat here. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, let me get to that slide. Enter Intelvin as the primary administrative username using the capitalization as shown. Set the federated repository as the current user account repository. Log out of the WebSphere administrative console after saving anything. Restart ITMCM. After this point, you'll need to use the SM admin user account credentials when stopping ITMCM, not the Intelvin user credentials. And this sets up completes SSO. So next slide, please. We've got a little bit of sanity checking we can we can do to make sure everything's working. And I'll just cover what happens with the synchronization um, from ITNM to ITNCM uh, to help you understand why things are, are doing what they're doing. So ITNCM fetches basic device information such as device name, device IP address, device entity ID, and device domain from ITNM via a REST API on a scheduled basis. ITNCM configuration manager then does its own auto discovery using the device IP address to determine the vendor type model and OS of the device, then imports the device, which means it connects to the device and pulls its configuration data to store in ITNCM. So after the first scheduled synchronization is executed, you should see auto discovery and import units of work in the queue manager in the ITNCM client GUI. You should also see devices in the realms corresponding to the ITNM domains appearing as they're discovered. They'll first have a vendor type model and OS of unknown, and then as they're discovered, the correct vendor type model and OS values will be populated. Depending on when you look at the, the GUI, they may, the UOWs, units of work may have already completed and may be in the work that's finished queues. And the realm names and the device locations will depend on how you set up that string for the realm to import devices into in the R series properties file. So next slide. We're going to skip this troubleshooting slide in the interest of time. It's just there for reference. So next slide. So our last real slide for the presentation, so we can have a little few questions, is sanity checking for the, the widgets, integration widgets that show up in the network manager dash GUI. So log into the Dash GUI as a user that's been set up uh, to access the integration components, such as the ITNM admin user. <clears throat> Check that the configuration manager client launch menus are there, and obviously see if they work. Um, go into AEL, active event list, and the ITNM network views, respectively. And there should be context menus for the devices or the events that show a configuration menu configuration management uh, item. Check that that works. And one of the key things to launch is the device activity sequence viewer 
couple caveats there, depending on your time zone. You may need to set the, uh, the end date of the search filter ahead a day or so to compensate for the GMT time used for database data. And at this point, only some of the context menus will appear in that device activity viewers, and there should be a patch coming out soon to fix that. Last slide is just another reference slide, and we'll skip that. And uh, I'll turn things back over so we can have questions. So we're doing questions still in the, um, I'll, I guess I can, I'll look at the questions coming in by the chat, by the questions dialogue and answer those. Chris, you might be a better resource to answer that question about the NOI being connected to the collection omnibus layer. Yeah, once I, I'm trying to open that, uh, okay. My panel is out now. That's good. Well, you want me to uh, want me to read the question for you? No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So, is NOI connected to the collection omnibus layer, or is it also connected to the aggregation omnibus? Um, if we have only two tiers set up, um, yeah. So the omnibus and the and the probes will go on the collection, and your GUI go on the aggregation. Um, but for IT and M. When it comes to ITNM, we connect the aggregation for several reasons. Um, that's what we have seen. But if we have a three-tier architecture, uh, again, that's a different story. So only the GUI will, the, the read user, read-only users will connect to the display compared to other users. Um, <clears throat> so the next one is, is there any possibility to have one and only WebSphere server for both NCM and other tools? Um, I think it is a requirement right now to have two profiles, two dash profiles. Um, does it mean, so Dave, maybe you can take this question. Can they have a two profiles within the one dash rather than having two dash instances? Can that's, we try that? that's, a pos that's a possibility, but it's not documented. Um, and the state we're in now is we're waiting for documentation from the development team on how that can be done and if it can't on uh, when that would be available. So at this point, I would say it's not a supported configuration. And do you want to take the next question? Will ITN CM support RAN network? Right, not at this point. Um, it does not support uh, LTE wireless devices and the infrastructure that, uh, that um, supports those. I think that Radu is asking more questions on the same uh, topic. I guess that has to go back to our architects and uh, come with you uh, appropriate feedback. Um, I can hook you up with the right folks if you'd like to have a roadmap session uh, later on. Feel free to ping me. And, and Radu's, uh, Radu and I are familiar, so he can ping me and I can also direct him to the correct people. all the questions I see in the chat. If there are no other questions, um, I would say thank you for joining the session today. Um, if you have any topics that you would like to see, feel free to post there. And we'll try to come up with, uh, with those in the near future. OK. Thank you, Krishna, and thank you, Dave. Thanks, everyone, for attending today's webcast. Again, we'll have the recording and slides available tomorrow in our webcast archives. You'll receive a follow-up uh, email with a link to those. As you exit, please take a few moments to fill out the post-event survey. This helps us improve future events. We truly appreciate your feedback, and this concludes today's event. Thank you all, and have a fantastic day. Thanks, Kelsey.